All right, this is just some practice on simplifying radicals. So when you are simplifying a radical, what you want to do is find hidden perfect squares, take their root, okay? So simplify each expression by factoring to find perfect squares and then taking their root. So first you need to understand that this is the inverse of this, okay? So the square root of x is the opposite of x squared, just like division is the opposite of multiplication and subtraction is the opposite of addition. So they undo each other. If you have x squared, the way to undo x squared is to take the square root of x squared is just gonna be x. The square root of three squared is just three. So three squared is nine. The square root of nine is three, right? Okay. So basically this is an under, this is a radical. Okay. So this is called simplifying radicals. This is a radical and it can have any index or any root. So this is a third root. This would be a fourth root. This, when there's no number here, is just a square root or a second root, okay? So that's an, we should say an understood two. We don't write it because if there's nothing there, we know it's a two because it's the smallest that those can be. The smallest number that can be right here is a two. So if there's nothing there, we know it's the general most common or smallest one, two. So the second root of x squared is x, the second root of three squared is three. So basically you're looking for three squared means we're multiplying three times three, right? Sorry, good. So three squared means we're multiplying three times three. So this, if you have a square root symbol and you have the same number multiplied by itself under that, that means you can take those out of the square root. So the square root of two times two is two. The square root of five times five is five. Good. So the square root of 25 is five because five squared is 25. Good. All right. So if that makes sense, then what you're trying to do when you have a number that's, all right, let's practice. Uh, if I had nine, that's three, right? If I had 16, that's four. If I had 25, that's five. The way that you find these is you take nine and you break it into its factors. Nine is three. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote that. Nine, if I was going to make a factor tree of it, is three times three, right? 16, you could say it's eight times two, but it's also four times four, right? 25 is five times five. So the square root of 25 is the same as the square root of five times five. The square root of 16 is the same as the square root of four times four. The square root of nine is the same as the square root of three times three. Once you have two numbers under here that are the same number, you can take them out of the radical. Good. And we can check that with a calculator. The square root of nine is three. The square root of three times three is three, okay? The square root of any number I put in here squared is gonna give me that number back, all right? So that proves that this square symbol undoes the square root symbol and that the square symbol just means that that is that number times itself. Good? Okay. So we know that. We know about factor trees. And now we are going to have numbers that are not perfect square roots. 
and we need to find out how to remove the perfect squares, okay? Perfect squares are like this, the number nine, the number 16, the number 25, the number 36, et cetera. Those are called perfect squares. So the square root of 75 is, the way I would solve this is I would take 75 and I would break it into its factors. I'm gonna factor 75. 75, I know it is, and try to think about the perfect squares that you know. You can even Google perfect squares and it'll give you a list. So we could take, if we did Google perfect squares, right? Let's look at it. The perfect two squared is four, right? Three squared is nine. Four squared is 16. Five squared is 25. Six squared is 36. Seven squared is 42, 49. See, I always get that confused. Seven times six is 42. Seven times seven is 49. Um, eight squared is 64. Nine squared is 81. So when you're trying to factor this number, we could take 75 and divide it by five, right? 75 divided by five is 15. So I could factor this as 15 and five, right? And then 15, I can factor further into three and five. Five is already um, the prime factor. So 75 becomes 15 times five becomes three times five times five, good? So that means the square root of 75 is the same amount as the square root of three times five times five, okay? Remember we decided that anything that is a pair under the radical can be removed, but it just becomes one after that, right? There's now one five outside the radical and under the radical, we still have the three. So the square root of 75 is five, times the square root of three. So I said, I just tried to think of 75. I took the easiest number I could to divide it by, right? If it ends in five, I can divide it by five. But I can also think about these, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81. Which one of these can I uh, divide 75 by? I can divide 75 by 25. So instead of 15 and five, I'm gonna say 25 and three, right? Three is a prime factor. So if three stays three, but 25 becomes five times five, right? So we got to the same answer. We just know that that's a prime. So that might be a little bit faster for getting you to the square root of 75 is the square root of five times five times three. So the square root of 75 is five times three, or you might just immediately know that 25 is five coming out of there, right? If I see the square root of 25, I know that that's five. I don't need to do this step. Doesn't matter, whatever's easiest for you. So 70, the square root of 75 is the same as, I almost wrote three on the outside, five outside, three inside the radical, good. 36 is, let me make sure. 36 is just six times six. So those come out. So the square root of 36 is just six. Good. 80 If I'm making a factor tree with 80, what do I think I can divide by? Not 81, not 64, not 49. Maybe 16, should we try 16? 80 divided by 16 is five, yay. So 80, I would just call 16 times five. And then I know that 16 is the perfect square of four. So that means 80 is the same as four square root five. 80 becomes 16 and times five. 16 becomes four times four, five remains five. 
So just to explain this again, the square root of 80 is the square root of four times four times five. So the square root of 80 is those two fours come out, four square root five. Good. The square root of eight, if I look at my perfect squares, four is a perfect square. So eight becomes four times two. Four is two squared. So eight, the square root of eight is actually two squared two. And you can put those into your calculator. Two square root two is the same as square root of eight. It should give you the same number in your calculator. Here we have 32. 32 might be 16. 32 divided by 16 is two. So here we have 32 becomes 16 and two. I know that 16 is four times four. And each row of this factor tree is equal to 32. 32 is 32, 32 is 16 times two, two, and 32 is four times four times two. So the square root of four times four times two becomes four square root two for number nine. 125, again, that's probably going to be 25. 125 is 25 and 5. 25 is 5 times 5. So 25 is actually the cube. It's actually 5 cubed. So that's going to be 5 square root 5 because these two can come out. Good. Okay. 